Okay, so here's a general guideline for optimization problems. I mean, it's not going to, not every problem is identical, obviously, but these are basically the steps you want to go through. Draw a picture, write down all of your variables. You might have to make up some of your own variables, but if you do, make sure you tell the reader what those mean. Make sure you label your pictures appropriately. Then figure out what it is you're trying to optimize. What quantity do you want the maximum or the minimum of? Do you want maximum area, minimum cost, whatever it is? Figure out how to write a formula for that using only one variable. We're in a calculus one class here, and we only know how to do one dimensional calculus. So if I have area equals length times width, I don't know how to optimize that. I don't know how to take the derivative of something with two different variables in it. You have to figure out how to write your quantity in terms of one single letter. Then once you do that, every single time, you're going to take the derivative, set it equal to zero. That's your critical point. Check your endpoints, check your critical point. The extreme value theorem says that you're going to have a maximum and a minimum someplace on that interval, and it'll occur. Both of those will occur at either the endpoints of the, that interval or at your critical points. Remember, uh, critical points can also happen where the derivative does not exist. We need to include those as well. But for most of these, optimization problems we'll be doing, the derivative will exist everywhere on our domain of interest for most of them. Okay, let's look at a, a little simple example here. So pause and read the question. Okay, first thing we want to do is draw a picture here. So I've got this rectangle. This side is 24 inches by 36 inches. And what we're going to do is cut a square out of each corner. And we're going to fold all these little flaps up. So this stuff here, this is gone. That's cut out. And then these flaps will fold up. So let's call this distance here, the side of this square here, let's call that x. So each of these squares is x by x. Then when I fold this thing up, I'm going to get this rectangular prism. So you got to actually imagine folding along these dotted lines. Folding that flap up and so forth. So how long? is each piece going to be? So we were at 24 inches, but I cut X out of each corner here. So this side is 24 minus 2X. And this side here will be 36 minus 2X because I this was 36, but I cut out an X right there and an X right there. And then these little sides are all x, all these little corners. Then when I fold this up, we'll have this side over here will be 36 minus 2x. This side here is 24 minus 2x. And my height of the this box I'm building will be x. What are we trying to minimize or maximize? The volume. I want the maximum volume. So let's write that down. We want to maximize volume. What's volume of a cube? Length times width times height, right? So I've got this cube here. I already know all of these in terms of x. So volume as a function of x will be 36 minus 2x times 24 minus 2x, times the height, x. Now, what about my domain? What's my domain of interest? What's the smallest mathematically that x could be? Well, it could be zero. I could cut nothing out, and then I'd end up with a volume of zero. 
What's the biggest X could be? So look at this side here. If I make X 12, if I cut out a square 12 by 12, then I've got nothing left on this side. This side over here would be zero if X is 12. So those are the extremes of what X values mathematically would make sense. And for both of these extremes, I'd end up with no box at all. My volume would be zero. So it's worth noting here that V of zero is the same as V of 12 would both be zero cubic inches. Okay, so I've drawn a picture. I've labeled it properly. I found my domain of interest. What values make any mathematical sense for X? I've written that thing I'm trying to optimize down in terms of only one variable. Now we're going to do calculus. We are going to take derivatives, set it equal to zero. So let's clean this guy up first. Now you can go and check this on your own. This thing, if I were to multiply it all out, I get this. I get 4x cubed minus 120x squared plus 864x. And just, like, again, you can trust me on that, or you can multiply this all out on your own and see that. Then the derivative is going to be 12x squared minus 240x plus 864. Oops. Okay, now what am I going to do with this? Always, like, anytime you find yourself taking a derivative for the rest of the class, I don't want to say always, but like 75% of the time, the reason you took the derivative was to set it equal to zero. So like if you're in working a calculus problem and you don't know what to do, again, I'm not saying this always works, but a lot of the times setting the derivative equal to zero was probably the right move. And here it is. We're trying to find the critical points. Think about what this function looks like. This is a cubic function. We know at 0, it's 0, and at 12, it's 0. And we know the graph is going to look something like this. Because we've taken college algebra, and we know how to graph cubics. Now, there's some other root over here. We could find it. It's 18, if you're curious, because that would make this 0. But this is what we're looking for right there, whatever that value is right there. That's where the volume is maximized in this region. This is the all we care about is from here to here. You can't have negative volume. None of this will make any sense. And here is our region of interest. There's our domain of interest. We're looking for that maximum value. That happens where the tangent line is zero, where the derivative is zero, slope of the tangent. Okay, so we want to do 12x squared minus 240x plus 864 equals zero. Okay, so I'm going to divide everybody by 12 here, just to make our numbers a little easier. And we get x squared minus 20x plus 72 equals zero. And this won't factor. This would be nice if we could just factor it. We could do completing the square on it, or we could do quadratic formula. So I'm going to do quadratic formula. X is negative B, opposite of B, plus or minus square root of B squared. Technically negative 20 squared, but that's going to get squared. Minus 4 times A times C all over twice a. And then like, again, you can check all the math here. You're going to get 20 plus or minus the square root of 112 over 2. And again, I've already worked this out, so I know that that does simplify. 
square root of, like you could just leave it like that. That's fine. But square root of 112 is square root of 16 times 7. Square root of 16 is 4. So I get 4 root 7 over 2. And then I'm always allowed to split up numerators. I could write that as 10 over 2 plus or minus 4 root 7 over 2. And then I could simplify both of those. 5 plus or minus. Oh, that, I'm sorry. Sorry, I lied to you. This is 20 still. 20 divided by 2 is 10 plus or minus 2 root 7. Now, one of those answers doesn't make any sense. One of those answers is that maximum. One of them is the minimum. I have to think, you got to think about domain. You, I know so far in your college career, you have not spent much time thinking about domain. Here you have to. One of those is that minimum and wouldn't make a box. It wouldn't make any physical sense. You'd end up with a negative volume. We want the smaller of those two. And we could just type these in a calculator and see which one's bigger, which one's between 0 and 12, and which one's bigger than 12. The one we want is the negative one. So our max occurs at the location, x equals 10 minus 2 root 7. And the max is, plugging that back in, like I've already done this, you can just check me if you want, 64 times 10 plus 7 root 7 cubic inches. And of course, in any real world scenario, we'd probably, this is inches, probably plug these in a calculator and get some decimal approximation of that. And you could do that here if you wanted to. But those are the, the numbers. Okay, that's a good place to stop on that one.